Warren Biebert says the church should direct government. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlman. That is right. Representative Lauren Biebert from the 3rd District of Colorado, in a speech to a major Colorado church, actually denounced the separation of faith and state in the United States. Indeed, she called explicitly for the church to direct the government. She's right. Even James Madison, who wrote the First Amendment, never envisioned a separation of faith and state. We're going to talk about how the Supreme Court, with two key decisions, opened a door to uh, faith, for faith to re-enter. Now people of faith must boldly enter it. As Jesus Christ himself said, I am he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. And I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Before I go any further, I do want to shout out to the sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, including this t-shirt. Sometimes faith will make you look stupid until it rains. Unquote Noah the greatest shipwright the world has ever known, and on that there can be no argument. <coughs> His was a story of faith, and faith lies at the heart of what Lauren Bieber was talking about. Lauren Bieber spoke for about an hour and a half to the Cornerstone Christian Center in Basalt, Colorado. Now, many different Cornerstone Christian Centers show up in the search engines, this one in Basalt, Colorado, owns the YouTube channel that carried Representative Bieber's speech on June 26, 2022. I've left a link in the description to the, uh, uh, the recorded live stream of her remarks. Here is the key excerpt from her speech. Quote, The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. That's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. Unquote Lauren Bieber. Now, by letter, she means Thomas Jefferson's letter to the Danbury Baptist Association in 1802. He wrote it, of course, in the, in the, toward the end of the first year of his presidency. The Library of Congress has the letter, as they should, because the Library of Congress began as Thomas Jefferson's private collection. Did you know that? Uh, anyway, I have a link in the description to the letter from the Library of Congress. Now I'm going to quote the relevant paragraph, though I warn you, it's a long and stringy sentence that kind men love to write in those days. Believing with you that religion is a matter that lies solely between a man and his God, that he owes no account, account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions, I contemplate with sovereign reverence the act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. Adhering to this expression of the supreme will of the nation in behalf of the rights of conscience, I shall see with sincere satisfaction the progress of those sentiments which tend to restore to man all his natural rights, convinced he has no natural right in opposition to his social duties." Unquote Thomas Jefferson. <coughs> well, I don't quite agree with Lauren Bieber here. This letter does not stink, but that paragraph provides a context almost no one takes into account. Now, note carefully, a person owes account to none other than God for his faith or his worship. And the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. 
Now, I'm going to go into what that means, but before I do, I do want to shout out to another sponsor, Bitnext. This is your replacement for Zoom, Slack, the Google G Suite, Microsoft Office 365, Dropbox, WeTransfer, and Chili Piper, among others. Unlike any of them, Bitnext protects your content and conversations so well that even the administrators can't see it. So this is your channel for secure comms, conferencing, cloud storage, and file sharing. Best of all, everything is back-end. You don't even need client software. If you have a browser, you can use Bitnext. Follow the link and give them a try. 28 days free of charge. You can't beat that with a stick. Okay, where was I? Oh, yes. <coughs> the, the Danbury Baptist Letter. And those excerpts I quoted. Those excerpts mean that President Jefferson would never have supported a Church of America. In other words, how or whether one worships God is a person's own business and not that of the government. Likewise, the government does not directly employ clergy with ministries to ordinary civilians. It employs military chaplains, maybe some department chaplains, but not ordinary folk. But it does not mean that the government never supports the ideas of religion. Nor does it mean that the gov government never makes law according to religious precept. Except, that is, any law prescribing a penalty for unbelief. We Christians leave that one up to God. He'll take care of that. Uh, that if He wants us to persuade if we can. Anyway. Separation of church and state means that the church does not act for the government nor take its orders. But separation of church and state does not mean separation of faith and state. Therefore, if we cannot persuade unbelievers, that does not mean we accommodate them in everything. For the spectacle of separation of faith and state, you can blame James G. Blaine and President Ulysses S. Grant, who put him up to it. I covered that, that sorry history of Blaine and his amendments when I talked about the Supreme Court's decision in Carson v. Macon. That, of course, is how the court repudiated Blaine. And it reputed it even more Blaine precedents with Kennedy v. Bremerton School District. Blaine acted as he did in the dark spirit of discrimination. Sadly, the Supreme Court still has on it three members who seem to believe that only atheism can avoid conflict. This trio will, sit, will see one substitution next term with the installation of Katanji Brown Jackson. Now, here's something Lauren Bieber could have mentioned, but I don't think she did, because if she had, somebody would have quoted her on this. Believe you me. Did you know that 12 of the 13 original states had established churches of their own? They didn't teach you that in civics class, did they? Yes. Now, James Madison declared that Congress should not establish a federal Church of America, but no one proceeded against any of these state churches. That is, until James G. Blaine proposed an amendment to the federal constitution forbidding any government support for religious schools. That amendment failed a proposal by four Senate votes, so he took his case to the states. 38 states ended up passing Blaine amendments, though one, Louisiana, repealed its amendment in 1974. Now, and it's only fitting that Lauren Bieber, a member of the House of Representatives, should denounce a movement towards separation of faith and state by a past Speaker of the House. All right, now where do we go from here? How do we move forward? Lauren Biebert probably, without realizing it, has touched on the need for America to become a civilizational state. A civilizational state has a civilizational principle. Atheism or secular humanism cannot serve as a civilizational principle. Atheism is, in fact, a cult of death. We see this cult in action today, with people threatening defiance of the Supreme Court's ruling in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. 
Now, that thread is probably empty because you don't defy a simple refusal to give orders one way or the other. But as I said before, the Supreme Court didn't find in the Constitution a right to life. Actually, the Constitution assumes a right to life because it enjoins the federal and state governments not to deprive a person of life without due process of law. So what is human life and when does it begin? For answer, look to King David of Judah, Psalm 139, verses 13 through 16. There it is, all about how God knew each of us while our mothers were carrying. Now that's one reason why America should reintegrate faith and state. Nor is that so outlandish a principle as people suppose. We've forgotten John Adams. Remember what he said? <coughs> I, I quote, Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. He was correct. Power of horrors of vacuum, and without God, the power of a few human beings, an oligarchy, supervenes. The Supreme Court broke the back of the oligarchy in its last term. The American people must return to God before the oligarchy can recover. Links to the description of the article, to Lauren Biebert's uh, live stream, to the Danbury Baptist Letter, and to Conservative News and Views. I have another link to the awesome online store, and to bit next, as I also mentioned. And if you like what you've heard, you can like this video. And on the end screen, I'm going to put in a subscribe link and also a link to a playlist I just created containing every video I've mentioned this time in the rough order in which I mentioned them. This is Terry A. Hurlba delivering another Declaration of Truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.